I credit TJ's um, consulting beforehand as the reason I got to deal with Mark Cuban, so everyone should do it. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, writing that down. Hey, what's up, Shark Treps? Welcome back to another epic session of the Shark Tank podcast. Now, before we begin today with my guest, who is Sean Patel, founder of 2400 Expert SAT Prep Company and newly minted partner of Mark Cubans, I just want to give you a heads up on what we're going to do. I've had so many inquiries and messages from new listeners and people who are interested in trying out for Shark Tank in season eight, and they've got questions about where they can find certain information. So rather than make them go back through 150 podcast episodes, which, hey, shoot, if they want to, go for it. I think there's a lot there to learn. I'm going to try to make it easier going forward, and I'm starting today. Go to sharktankpodcast.net forward slash 2400 expert. That is the URL for the corresponding blog post to today's podcast. And there will be a link there to download a premium content video and PDF summary of the show. It's actually a separate podcast Sean and I did just for people looking for the premium information about getting on Shark Tank. I hope you love it. I look forward to hearing your feedback and I hope you enjoy this session of the Shark Tank podcast. Of course. This is always part of the ride. This is my main thing. Okay. It's but my baby. Yeah. All right. But if the baby expands and you have other children, yeah. <laughs> I want I, I want to be, you know, the godparent to those you children. You would of course be the godparent. Okay. So what I'll do is Welcome to the Shark Tank podcast. Each week, one of the best entrepreneurs from ABC's network smash hit Shark Tank teaches you how to swim with the sharks without being eaten alive. And now your host, serial entrepreneur, T.J. Hale. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Shark Tank podcast. I'm jacked to have Sean Patel, the founder of 2400 Expert. Is it 2400 SAT or 2400 Expert? I don't want to screw it up. It's important. 2400 Expert SAT Prep. There we go. And <laughs> he's here as a season seven entrepreneur that bagged a deal with Mark Cuban for 20% of his company at $200,000. Sean, 250K. Was it 200 or 200? I got an extra 50K, TJ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 250K. Yeah. I can't read my own writing. Man, it's a pleasure to have you back. And for those who do not remember you, you were the young man who was conflicted between being a doctor and being a mega entrepreneur at Mark Cuban's side. So we kind of had to get that hashed out during your session, right? Yeah, exactly. So thanks for having me, TJ. I'm excited to talk all about it. And uh, I'm excited to have you back too. We did a mock Shark Tank session prior to your filming, which was a lot of fun. And it made watching the segment like nerve wracking. Usually I just enjoy <laughs> watching the show, but watching you up there, I felt like it was one of my kids. I was biting my nails and I had the pillow up by my eyes. Like it's yeah. probably the closest thing to being there. I was like, come on, Sean, come on, come on, Sean. <laughs> Yeah, no, we had the mock audition. I can't even remember. It must have been May. I recorded in June. So we did it a month before. Yep. And uh, you had pointed out a lot of the inconsistencies that the sharks were going to point out. And you picked out exactly what they were uh, worried about. Um, Luckily, it worked out well for me. It almost didn't, but it was a very dramatic segment, uh, not only for TV, but it was dramatic when I was in there, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not going to talk too much about that, except that if people listening are going on Shark Tank, shoot me an email on the website because we're going to do it again this year. We had, I did it just a few slots. We're going to open it up a little wider, and I think I'm going to bring on Cope Sharks panelists, and I have your name on that list to yeah. uh, help people prepare. Like you said, I know it made a difference. And what was hilarious when I watched you on TV, the main thing that we talked about was, do I want to be a doctor or do I want to be an entrepreneur? And that's kind of yeah. where they snagged you. And I thought, my wife turns to me and she's like, wait, didn't you guys talk about that? And I'm like, yes, of course we did. Yes. <laughs> that was our main talking point. Yeah, no, but uh, I credit TJ's um, consulting beforehand as the reason I got to deal with Mark Cuban, so everyone should do it. <laughs> whoa, whoa, writing that down. Um, <laughs> Yeah, hopefully Mark listens to that. No, I'm teasing. Uh, <laughs> so we, we did talk about how you really were set on getting Mark. You were open to doing deals with other sharks, but uh, you basically were super stoked about having Mark on the team. Now, yeah. were you disappointed not to get any other offers? Because he on the edit, he waited till the very end, and he was the only one who gave you an offer. Is that how it went down? Yeah, that's exactly so. You know, it's always funny. Uh, I've noticed in, in previous Shark Tank episodes, you know, Mark sort of stays quiet until the end and he always sort of, sort of has the last say. Uh, and he did exactly that when I was in the studio. He, he had a, a few things to say in the beginning and they weren't very nice things, actually. And uh, So it, it sounded like he was actually out from the beginning. And then the other four went out. He stayed quiet for about an hour 
and then all of a sudden he was interested at the very end, and so uh, he really saved me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm very happy that it ended up working out. Almost was very close to not working out. Very, I think uh, if uh, if he had gone out too, I may not even be aired. Who knows what what could have happened? But uh, it was a, a very fortunate uh, circumstance for me. Yeah, it's all worked out pretty good. So I don't want to anger anyone who's listening who I get complaints that they can't remember the exact episode. So you are a perfect score holder. You're 20, you're the gold medalist of the SAT realm. You got a 2,400, but yeah. you mentioned that you really didn't do that well on the test the first mm -hmm. time you took it. And since getting the 2,400, that opened up doors all over the place for your career. And you credit it as the reason that you got everything from meeting the president to, I've got a list of accolades here, but primarily that you got into your uh, medical program and you're allowed to pursue your dream. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's currently, I'm currently at Yale doing my MBA. A lot of the uh, things that happened to me from in my life, whether it's getting to prestigious universities, uh, winning a quarter million dollars in scholarships, beating the president, like you mentioned, uh, I really credit towards my standardized test score. Um, it just put me on a whole new level, uh, academic level. And what I've tried to do with 2400 Expert is teach other students uh, how I improve my own SAT score from average to perfect so that they can do it to emulate my success um, with you know far greater successes. I just had a student email me the other day saying they used my test prep materials and they got into Harvard, Princeton, and Yale. And so that was just, you know, I love getting those emails. I love those success stories and that's why we do it. More power to you, but the first time we talked, I thought this is kind of incredible because I'm I'm torn on college. I kind of in the Peter Thiel school of college approach, which is yeah. that uh, college gets all the credit for the most successful kids going there because that's what's in front of their path. But that doesn't necessarily mean that college has that much to do with it. So when you tell me that studying and taking the test the right way opened up all these doors, I think it's really it's great for you, but it's yeah. bad for the kids who don't understand that or don't take the time to up their SAT score because yeah. then they're spending all the money for the college experience without getting the college benefit. Yeah, no, and, and you know, I, I share a lot of your views and it's interesting that I share them because I, you know, I, I, my whole business is around test prep. Um, I think test prep, I think SAT, ACT, all of that is a necessary evil. I think it sucks for a lot of students because you don't learn it in high school, which is why businesses like mine even exist. Um, I am right. still a proponent of, of college. Um, you know, I think it's, it opens up a lot of doors for you and avenues. It's very hard. Uh, you know, unless you're a successful entrepreneur like TJ, um, to to get jobs without a bachelor's degree. So I think Mark Cuban agrees with me on that. Um, but you know, there is a whole school of thought, and that you you may not necessarily need college to be successful, which I, I think that's true too. Um, but for the vast majority of society, I think it is very important aspect um, if you're looking to uh, get by these days. Yeah. It's I'll just put a disclaimer out there. It is not easy. I mean, everything has a degree stamped on it. So if you don't go yeah. that route. It's difficult, but uh, certainly it's it's enlightening to me to hear that it's not really the college that got you the high test score. It's your specific test prep and now the course that you teach that opened all the doors. So it comes at a yeah. pretty steep price. Yeah, exactly. I mean, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're studying for the SAT, it's, you got to put in the work, right? So if you're an entrepreneur, you got to work your butt off. Uh, learn everything, uh, learn how to launch a business and, and be successful at it. If you're studying for the SAT and you want to do well, you've got to, again, work your butt off. Um, no one's going to hold your hand through it. You've got to put the effort in. And, uh, you know, we give you all the materials you need, but you've got to put in the effort. Um, you know, Mark Cuban says the one thing you can control is effort, right? So uh, I think that's true, as true for entrepreneurship as it is for test prep or anything else. So what I really like, I just had Luminate on last week, Andrea, she's phenomenal. Um, she's kind of Indian too. We should hook you guys up. There might be a little, I'm just <laughs> totally joking. Uh, yeah. 376 point increase in your score over the six weeks. So what you did after this increase in score is you digitize or productize this business, much like Andrew, who's in college, had an idea, started selling it while she's going to class. And pretty soon you've got a million dollars in sales under your belt. Take us through the kind of the process of you deciding that you could do this while you had all the other things going on in your life and that you, it would be successful. Yeah, so I mean, I never actually planned to start a business. To be honest with you, I only wanted to write a test prep book. Um, after I raised my own score in high school, I was like, "There's a bunch of methods that I know um, are that are not out there that I want to teach other students." And after I pitched my book proposal out to over a hundred literary agents and publishers, uh, got rejected by every single one. I was like, "What am I going to do with all this material?" Let me teach some courses. I'll teach one. Um, you know, I'll just teach one course over the summer between college and medical school. Make a little bit of money, and that'll be it. But after that 376-point improvement, like you said, 
Uh, it was really unheard of in the test prep industry to change. You know, that's from going going from the 50th percentile to the 90th percentile. Right. Um, and so I had parents knocking on the door saying, "You got to teach more courses." And uh, I wasn't able to teach more courses. I was going to medical school, so I hired instructors, trained them to teach my material, uh, made sure they were really good, just as good as me. And uh, it's been going well. And it was it was basically just slowly growing while I was in school. Um, you know, managing school and the business was always really tough. But then that's when I decided I want to do Shark Tank. Um, you know, I was in business school to learn how to expand my company. And, uh, you know, Shark Tank has really just turned the business into something that I, I had only dreamed of. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about Shark Tank and you deciding to go down that path. So I know when I got the phone call to do the mock Shark Tank, but you'd already been in the the loop for a while by then. So how did you get on? Did they call you? Did you call them? Open call application? Tell us about it. Yeah. No. So unfor- I was not fortunate enough, fortunate enough to be invited to Shark Tank. I went through, uh, I went through the uh, process just like everyone else, very democratic. Um, no. Uh, so I stood in line in New York with 500 other entrepreneurs. Um, took nine hours uh, to finally get my one minute pitch in. Uh, gave the one minute pitch. They, uh, didn't seem that impressed at the open calls, so, but I felt good about my chances because I got a smile. If you can get a smile from the casting call producer, that's always a good sign. And uh, so got a call week, two weeks later for a video audition, put the video audition together. Um, and, you know, these things are not easy tasks. I spent 10 hours on my one-minute pitch. I spent 30 hours doing my video audition, uh, putting together my application. Uh, I spent a lot of time putting this uh, very thoughtfully together um, with a lot of preparation and uh, it ended up working out. I got the, it, it happened really fast for me. I, I auditioned in uh, early April in New York at the open call, and I was pitching uh, the Sharks in mid June. So you know, I think that was a pretty fast turnaround. Yeah, yeah, that is definitely. Yeah. And then uh, we talked a little bit about the mock Shark Tank. I think the main issue when you got on the stage, I'll go through some of the. I want to say the concerns or the issues that were brought up, which I think are always very useful because you get them from smart people. Yeah. Um, Really, it was it, it was when I know you said they they messed with the edit a little bit, but Kevin O'Leary came out and said he knew everything about the education market, which we expected, right? Yeah. And at one point, when things weren't going well, you threw out that you'd be open to do a licensing deal, which I was expecting that to come. I don't think it happened the way it did. It was almost like you were throwing out a life raft. I would have imagined you would have brought that up pretty quickly. Yeah, no. So I'm not sure. Uh, it looked like you know in the edit, I just sort of mentioned it, and then Robert got pissed off. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. uh, but. Uh, no, it didn't really go. I, I was talking to Kevin. I mentioned the licensing deal aspect because I knew he was an investor in Princeton Review and Kaplan right. and that he likes licensing deals. Um, so I thought that would be an interesting opportunity. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he, didn't, uh, he didn't see it that way. But I wanted to at least let them know that I'm thinking in uh, a variety of different ways. Uh, unfortunately, that ended up backfiring on me because Robert thought, you know, I don't have a direction for the company, which is real. I didn't. I didn't think that was a fair assessment. I think when you're an entrepreneur um, or a business owner, you always want to be open to a variety of different ways to expand and scale your company. So licensing would would be one that I'm open to and considering. Um, so I thought that was a rather unfair assessment uh, by Robert uh, of of me. I agree. When it happened, he was saying, you know, an entrepreneur says, oh, I'll try this. Oh, I'll try that. I'm amenable to all these suggestions. And that's not that kind of focus isn't going to help you accomplish your goal. But you're in college. You're taking a full load. You're planning on being a doctor. And I think we had talked the business was kind of just growing on its own via referral. It's not like you were putting a lot of time into buying yeah. ads or, you know, papering the town with these course flyers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We actually spent almost no money on marketing prior to Shark Tank and um, now we are because we realize that once people know about our business, it does pretty well. Shark Tank <laughs> uh, definitely let people know about our business. But uh, yeah, no, I think um, you know what I was trying to convey to Robert. So, so I think Robert's assessment of me was uh, a shark, t- uh, an entrepreneur who's just sort of fumbling around, not knowing what he's doing. Uh, but I sort of know what I'm doing. I've built this business. I've have a million dollars in sales. Um, I've got something that's working and going well. Uh, it's not like I, I've just got an idea and I was trying to figure out where to go with it. Yeah. So you're teaching the in-person course for in the classroom. It's a six week course. It's a thousand dollars, which you figured is about $17 per hour to the parent. And six months prior to airing, you started doing online courses, which already accounted for 40% of your sales at a $600 price point. 
Yeah. Um, now I think that you mentioned selling to the parents. You want to make sure there's a live element to it. And we've talked about this in terms of a shark tank course. Yeah. Uh, you think you feel very strongly about that. Most people I know are automating the package course and that's where the scale is. Has your attitude changed since you were on shark tank or do you still feel pretty strongly about that? Uh, somewhat it has changed actually. I mean, Lori Grenier, I showed a small clip, um, in the show of, of Lori saying, you know, she really wants the on demand packaged content because that's what's scalable. And so I did put that together prior to airing on Shark Tank and that actually did sell very well, um, post Shark Tank and it's still selling very well. I'd say it's actually become our best seller. Um, you know, and so you guys were right about that. I will say. Uh, you know, the Shark Tank pack, um, the on-demand course, obviously, that's what can scale the most because you don't necessarily need a live instructor all the time. Um, but I think uh, at the same time, in, in terms of test prep, I think, you know, every student learns differently. So some students are very self-motivated and they can watch the course on their own and they'll do all the work. Some students, they need um, a set time where they can ask questions to an instructor, where the instructor can walk them through lessons. Specifically, some students need one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Some students need that in-person experience. So what we try to do is offer a full suite of every single offering so that we're not missing any of the market. Yeah, I like, and you know, you have the flexibility in terms of the brand where what I like about the on-demand is you can niche it and parse it down to little bites where they can basically study exactly what they want or get answers yeah. to what they want. So it, it seems like it makes sense to do both. So yeah. Anyway, I, I like that you've added. I'm not surprised it's been so successful, but you know, you can kind of do whatever you want. So that's nice. No, it's been great. And I think it's, it's really scalable to selling to schools and school districts now, which is what uh, we're actually working on and uh, offering it to entire schools because it's very easy to scale it. And so I think it's been um, a good suggestion that you initially gave before Shark Tank and that Lori gave again during Shark Tank. And, um, you know, we've put together and it's done very well. So, so I appreciate both your and Lori's advice. <laughs> Well, uh, I've got to give a shout out to the people who pre-bought my course. I had a VIP uh, pre-launch and 10 Brave Souls front-loaded a small payment, down payment for that course. And it's so much work. Like, I got to give you props. I never built a course before yeah. you and I spoke. It's taken at least 10 times longer to do every single part of that than I expected. It's almost yeah. done. But my gosh, like, how big is your team now? I mean, obviously, you teach the live ones. But yeah. how long did it take you to get it figured out? Because it's not enjoyable. I'll be honest. Oh, no, no. The, the course creation is the hardest part. And I think that's why um, we've done so well is because I spent – you know, a thousand plus hours putting the get course together. Um, I made sure, yeah, yeah, I know. I've made sure that this is really, that's what, pe that's what goes on behind the scenes that I think people don't appreciate. Um, it's just the course development, the curriculum, it's all been very well thought out, uh, meticulously prepared by me. And um, I think the same goes for you is whenever someone creates a really awesome course, um, you know, they're, they're getting, uh, probably more than what they're paying for. Um, you know, you're getting a really high quality uh, piece of content that's going to serve you well because um, if you're a great content producer like myself or yourself, um, I think we, I mean, obviously it uh, depends on the content producer, but we really put in the time and effort to make sure uh, we do the best job possible for our consumers. Yeah, I started looking at the prices that are out there for similar courses and what I want to charge. And every hundred hours I'd put into this thing, the price in my mind starts going up. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I just I can't give this away for cheap. It's just too much time and work involved. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, so anyway, because I was looking on social media, it's I don't know if you do this, if you indulge Twitter, Reddit, etc. But yeah. when people go on Shark Tank, there's this group of people that just savage them. There's mm -hmm. others that kind of give them the benefit of the doubt, and then there's the Shark rest Tank of the trolls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tank, uh, we got to think of a new name for that, like uh, Troll Tank. Yeah. Anyway, and then there's a group of people who just enjoy it for what it is, and they try to learn as much as they can, which is what we foster here. But I enjoyed reading the comments about you because obviously I know more about your segment than almost the 95% of the ones on there. And I'm listening, watching these people say things thinking they have no clue what they're talking about. Like none yeah. whatsoever. Making assumptions about your intentions, assumptions about your desires, uh, yeah. things that you said that you shouldn't have. And I'm just thinking idiot, 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 no clue. Yeah. Do you read any of that stuff or do you just uh, avoid it? Yeah. No, I definitely, I've, I've read some of it. I don't, I don't go out looking for it. <laughs> you know, I don't try to ruin my day on purpose. But, you know, when we have articles that we post on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, they come out on other, um, other media outlets and things like that, you know, there's some, there's some horrible things said. There's some great things said, too. Um, so uh, I, think, I think it just is what it is. I, uh, you have to sort of learn, especially if you're going to be on Shark Tank, that 
Uh, people are going to judge you, criticize you, and think they can do it better than you. Um, and uh, you know, you just can't let that get to you. You have to focus on the positives. You have to focus on people that support you, uh, like TJ and others that are just, have been with you throughout all of it and understand you a lot better. Um, if you let those people get to you, it can really um, mess up you, mess you up emotionally. And so, um, I really just try not to pay attention to it. I didn't think you'd seek it out, but I would read that and think, oh, I wonder if Sean saw this. This is this, this is ridiculous. And knowing you beforehand and knowing what happened, I'm like, these. This is the danger, the dark side of getting on TV and the publicity, for sure. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, I'm sure you know. I'm sure the sharks get way more of it than, than the Shark Tank entrepreneurs. But uh, learning how to deal with that is is part of the process, I think, because you're in the public eye as a Shark Tank entrepreneur. Um, you know, whether it's before, uh, you know, once you hit the show and afterwards, uh, you gotta, you, you're almost a, a target for the people that want to criticize uh, other people for their success. I might link to, I wrote a couple articles called Attack of the Trolls, the Shark Tank Trolls. They're pretty funny, oh. but it's people like you who've been on the show that just screenshotted some of the gems and I posted them in a, an aggregate article. It's pretty funny stuff. Oh, no way. I'll have to check that out. Um, so one of the things that came up that was kind of a sticking point was the cost of customer acquisition. And this was Kevin who brought it up on the show because he said the larger education companies, and he's worried about you being outpositioned, right? And yeah. uh, ultimately stomped on like a cockroach. Yeah. The larger companies, their entire model is based around the customer acquisition cost. And you admitted that you didn't really have it figured out, but it's because you weren't pursuing new customers aggressively. So how big of an issue was this with Mark once you guys are behind the scenes or you're working with Abe and the team about how you're going to kind of scale the business and, and keep track of your metrics? Yeah, I know. So um, it hasn't been a huge issue in terms of uh, determining that number yet. Uh, but now what's interesting is one of the, the great things that, uh, uh, that's happened since Shark Tank is Google Media Partnerships has reached out and they thought we'd be really successful on the Google platform, uh, whether it's pay-per-click or display and all that. And so they're actually taking on our entire um, Google marketing and they're going to be helping us figure out uh, our exact CAC and, and that's complimentary. And so, so some really cool partnerships uh, come out of uh, – uh, of Shark Tank, wow. uh, and you know they've done it for a couple other Shark Tank companies. They were telling me, but what they do is what they watch Shark Tank for uh, companies that they think could be really successful on the platform that aren't currently utilizing it. And uh, so it's really nice. Um, you know, Shark Tank opens all kinds of doors that you just wouldn't even imagine uh, before the show. So the guys at Google are like, it's not enough that you have all the free promotion from Shark Tank <laughs> and your partnership with Mark Cuban. We got to yeah. call him and do all his. Uh, Cost per yeah. click advertising revenue. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing, yeah. Because uh, you know, navigating that world, and I, I knew you know a lot about it, but like navigating the world of marketing and, and PPC and online marketing, display, retargeting, all of that stuff. You know, it's it's a lot to figure out for an entrepreneur who's trying to focus on their business. And so to have Google come in and say, you know, we'll do this for you, is, is pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Why don't you just not worry about that, Sean? We'll take yeah. it from here. Good for you. Yeah. Um, so there's one other thing. I'm just looking at my notes from the show, the licensing deal we talked about, the doctor and the entrepreneur. The one thing they kind of hit you with at the end as a kind of corollary point to this doctor versus entrepreneur was being fully committed. And it was Kevin who said, you know, your market, your recession, sorry, your market is recession proof, but yeah. you have to be 100% committed. And ironically, that's when Mark came in and said, you know, at some point you're going to get bored with this. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be in 10 years? And he brought up the aqua hire. Yeah. I don't know if that had ever been said on Shark Tank, but anytime they take the time to display <laughs> it and like define it for the audience, I'm like, oh, yeah. they think we're stupid. Write that one down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that was a that was an interesting thing. Is you know that that's probably become the biggest point of contention um, that I saw in comments on internet things like you know uh, Mark Cuban just took twenty percent of his life and all these things that came out, um, but. You know, but you were, what were you doing with that twenty percent? It was just sitting there. You weren't doing anything with it. It's fine. Yeah, yeah give it no. up. Uh, no, but um, you know what's funny is that I didn't even notice that in the tank. Like your heart, your mind is running so fast, your heart's beating so hard that I didn't even notice that Mark Cuban had said. Aquar. I heard the whole twenty percent of future businesses and things like that. Um, just to clear the air for everyone, there's nothing in my contract that's like contractually obligates me. Uh, to give 20% of any future business. But um, I think it's more of a handshake deal between me and Mark is if I decide to pursue something full-time uh, further than 2,400 expert that I would give him, give him first option on an investment. Um, 
you know. But right now, I'm not even thinking that far. I'm just thinking of how do I deal with the Shark Tank effect and uh, make this as big as possible. Yeah. yeah, and that's not uncommon. For people who listen to the show, you know that there are deals where it's unspoken, but later Mark will come back and say, look, if we go back to the well, I want rider first refusal or I want, uh, you know, if you have different products or lines that you come out with, he always wants to be engaged or have a part of that. So yeah, not and, surprising. And I, yeah, and I think it was really the ultimate compliment for him to uh, do that. Actually, I, I found it uh, him sort of having faith in me, and, and I, I don't think there was anything wrong with that. Although a lot of people were kind of bugged by it. Huh. So let's spend just a moment talking about Mark. I mean, that was your goal. You got what you wanted. Is it lived yeah. up to the expectations? Right at par? Is he a jerk? I mean, tell tell us about it. No, Mark's awesome. Um, what's cool about Mark is he's got this whole venture uh, team set up that you got to work with. So he's got. Um, his website team that, you know, like I mentioned before, they made sure our website didn't crash during the, the airing. Then he's got his uh, business team. Uh, they've taken over accounting. Uh, then uh, Mark and his um, team also provide marketing and strategic uh, direction. Uh, but what's nice about Mark is he's always accessible. Um, so Mark operates pretty much primarily on email and cyberdust. Um, you know, he forces everyone to email and Cyberdust. Cyberdust is his thing, right? And uh, but it's awesome because you know I can reach out to Mark at any time of day um, on email or Cyberdust, and I get an immediate response, which is pretty amazing. Given that you know he's a billionaire NBA team owner with you know hundreds of investments, um, that he still takes that much of an interest. And you know he recorded a video recently for us for the company. Um, he's made some great introductions, and so uh, I think. You know, I can ask for anything more. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I was reading a story. It was probably over a year ago about how when he took over the Mavericks, he had the new head coach. Um, I think it was the short guy that I've forgotten his name, but Avery Johnson. It might was it Avery High Voice Avery Avery. It might have been. I don't know. Yeah, Avery Johnson. And I heard about how they he came over and they ate cereal together on the floor in his living room. Have you done that yet? Have you had Fruit Loops on the carpet with Mark? Uh, no, I'm hoping to. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. Uh, no, definitely. Uh, the one thing I forgot to ask during uh, – and I had this all planned out. I, it was my plan. I was like, if Mark Cuban gives me a deal, I'm going to say I have one contingency and the contingency was going to be uh, I want courtside Mavericks tickets. Um, but uh, – I forgot to ask that, and I will be asking that very soon. I, I haven't had the guts yet to ask Cuban for that, but we will. He's closed about 50 deals. He's going to run out of courtside seats pretty soon with all these <laughs> uh, ankle-biting entrepreneurs he's got in the squad. Yeah. I was pretty pissed at myself that I forgot about that. <laughs> so are you in Yale now, or are you back in – I know you did the viewing party in Vegas, but you're in Yale yeah. full-time, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, In Yale, just, like it's a town? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We uh, did the viewing party in Vegas a month ago. Um, I'm finishing up my spring semester of my MBA, just finishing up my MBA here at Yale. That's where I am. I'm at the school of management. That's what's behind me right now. And, uh, yeah, so I'll be in Connecticut through May working on my business, uh, full time again in the summer. And then I head back in the fall to finish my last year of medical school at USC in Los Angeles. So I'm just everywhere. I'm Connecticut, I'm Vegas, I'm LA, everywhere. Yeah. So is that a point of contention with Mark? Because they always joke that he's the guy who makes the six-year-old quit grade school and focus full-time on the lemonade stand. What has that conversation been like? Uh, no, because I think Mark's seen the sales and he's all right with it. Uh, no, it's a, no he's a, it hasn't been a point of contention. I think he's seen that I've done this. And that's what I tried to convey to um, the Sharks during the show is I've been doing this for four years now. Um, I've been in school. I've been uh, doing the hardest years of medical school, and I still grew my business organically to a million dollars. And so I think Mark's seen that in the past, and he sees he sees now that it's even going much faster than that. And uh, so as long as the numbers grow and the business continues to grow, I, I don't think I'll have an issue with it. I only have a year and a half of school left, and so I'm actually almost done. Um, and so I think it's actually – going to work out just crossing my fingers going to work out just fine yeah. all right so i have two questions for you one's kind of a, a teaser the other one's important the teaser is what's this done to your dating life or your reputation at yale like how is it if, talk about the halo effect of being the shark tank guy uh yeah what's interesting is i'm in business school right and so uh business school mark cuban is uh, is a god in business right and so uh it's really really uh just it's made me sort of a mini celebrity at Yale or campus. I get recognized um, from uh, Yale undergraduates and things like that. Uh, so it's kind of cool being, if you're a student entrepreneur, it's, it's a very cool thing to be on Shark Tank. Um, and 
no, it's just it's been awesome. Definitely gotten some marriage proposals and uh, things like that. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's been a good experience. Yeah, now you got ri- now you got rich people problems, man. Now you got yeah. proposals. You got to check their credit and their uh, legal history. Yeah, you didn't need that before. There was a guy who came on my show a long time ago. He was the first college entrepreneur who did a deal with Mark Cuban that I'm aware of. It was um, it was Kiss Sticks. Uh-huh. Right. And after, and we, I asked him the same question because he had taken a semester off school to yeah. build his company. And when yeah. he came back on, he had one semester left. He said his grandmother would turn over her grave if he didn't finish school. So he's yeah. doing an international business course and he talks about how he's sitting there and he goes, everything was different because we're yeah. opening up Vietnam and Laos and Cambodia. We're opening up the Asian territories and I'm in international business class. And during the lecture, I'm going, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. That's incorrect. No. <laughs> and I said, he, he, you're looking around thinking, do all these other kids, they don't know any better. They don't know they're paying for instruction that's technically no longer accurate or relevant. Have you had that happen before? Do you uh, shake your head no? It's a, no, it's just, it's, it's an interesting, like, you know, I've been in negotiations and it's it's kind of like I've done the greatest, biggest uh, national negotiation you could see. Like I'm in negotiations class. I'm, I'm in classes where, uh, entrepreneurship classes where I have to pitch my business and it's you know, I've done the biggest pitch you could ever do. Like, well, I, I'm not nervous doing pitches anymore. And so um, it's just it's just a fun and interesting uh, position to be in. Yeah, I don't know. I posted a YouTube video on back to school where Rodney Dangerfield goes back with his kid. Did you ever see that movie in the 80s? Uh, what movie? Back to school. He's a business no. magnate who goes back to school, college, because okay. he never finished to encourage his kid to go. Yeah. And he gets in fights with his professors because he's smarter than they are. So it's, it's that kind of thing. <laughs> I, I don't want to say that. I'm not on record as saying that. Well, <laughs> they, they have disagreements. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so anyway, the last question that's serious is we talked about creating a course around getting on Shark Tank. And yeah. I had written an ebook about it because there's so much of the process beyond submitting the video that's still shrouded in secrecy. And a lot of that stuff you can share and people just don't know who to call or they don't have contacts. So we wanted to put together a course where people could go and feel like if they're going to invest a year of their life in this process and go for the big millions and the Shark Tank tsunami, let's take them through the process and make sure they're foundationally ready to meet the challenges. So uh, we haven't really talked about it since you aired, but why don't we give them a landing page or give them a URL and we'll kind of kind of give an expectation for when they can do that if they're planning on going to an open call or getting on the show. Yeah. So, um, you know, TJ and I have discussed a lot about putting together a how to get on Shark Tank course just because um, I saw it as a very analogous process to uh, SAT prep, right? So for SAT prep, there's a lot of secrets and tricks that nobody teaches you um, and you just sort of have to know or um, in, in you know, like I said, no one teaches it to you. So why not we be those people that teach it to you? With my own experience of going through the process, I used a lot of interesting methods to perfect my open call, to perfect my video audition, um, to perfect my application. And what I want to do is teach uh, other entrepreneurs how to do that. TJ's got the expertise um, with the connections and uh, talking to so many entrepreneurs that have been successful that I'm sure you know he can leverage so many more resources than he, than even I could uh, as to how to help entrepreneurs get on the show. Um, and so, if uh, entrepreneurs want to uh, learn how to get on Shark Tank, do every single part of the process, whether it's from open call to pitching the sharks, uh, they should definitely check out our course on how to get on Shark Tank. Uh, we'll put up a landing page at 2400expert.com/sharktank. Um, and then TJ, uh, I believe you'll have an analogous landing page on your own site, right? I will. I was just thinking, I do have the expertise. I don't have the expertise in creating courses. Not a business I'm super excited about because it yeah. kicked my backside the first time I tried it. But uh, I'm really excited but, about But I am an expert in courses, so, yeah, so exactly. it'll be good. Yeah, it'll be great. Yeah, Yeah. so we'll do that. And make sure you go to sharktankpodcast.net forward slash 2400 expert. That'll be the um, blog post for this episode where the uh, downloadable content will be in terms of helping get on Shark Tank as well. So they'll have a lot of options to get them started. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, Sean, thank you so much for joining me. Excellent session. And I hope that people will take the time to learn more about what you're doing there. And you've got a lot of great content, call it a business propaganda out there on Entrepreneur and Inc. and everywhere else. So I commend you for getting your face out there and telling your story because it is pretty, we didn't even cover the pre-story, which is fascinating as well. Thanks, TJ. Yeah, no, um, I think for all people that are going to be on Shark Tank, take advantage of your 
15 minutes and make it go 15 hours. And that's what I try to do, right? It's just I reached out to a lot of big media publications and, and with uh, really interesting articles to get your name out there and make sure it's not just one night. But we're still – we were just on the front page of Yahoo with an article in Business Insider last week. And, uh, you know, you continue to um, get your name out there and make sure that people know about you. Yeah. And I've, we haven't talked about this, but I assume it's because you give them the story, right? Too many exactly. businesses think that they're just going to get contacted and they'll do interviews, like make it easy for those no. people to promote you. Exactly. No one's going to come. I mean, there are a few people that come to you, but there's, a, you, you know, you got to put in the, the legwork if you want to be a success. And, and we'll talk about that in the how to get on track tank course, how you could uh, do some pre-media buzz and post-media buzz uh, before and after the show. All right, Sean, thanks for jumping in. Best of luck to you out there. All right, thanks for having me, TJ. It's been a pleasure. Why are you doing that? Wait, now you're no. going 300. Oh, all right, I take your offer, Mark. Which Done. Is <laughs> thanks, Thank Mark. You. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Congratulations. You make a lot of money. Thanks. thanks. We appreciate it. Impressive. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. That was amazing. Mark Cuban is my business partner. That's that's pretty cool. Thank you for jumping in to the Shark Tank podcast. Please subscribe to the show on iTunes and head over to sharktankpodcast.net to get the show notes from each episode and join the free Shark Tank insiders list. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Shark Tank Podcast and on Twitter at Shark Tank PDcast.